make sure it was worth a thousand words. In this case, we saw a lot of pictures. The whole event was basically caught on camera, and you got to see with your own eyes exactly what happened in this case. You got to see the Durham's block Zach driving down the road to his house. You got to see Zach flee to his house. You got to see the Durham's pull up to the house. You got to see them storm the garage. And you got to see them attack Zach. They told you themselves. It was intentional. Gage sat there and told you. That was the plan. Billy told you. My understanding of you got me was absolutely that I was going to physically confront Zach. And I wasn't going to stop. Let's start by talking though a little bit about what you heard in this case. So first, you're, you heard statements by William Durham Sr. What was one of the first statements you heard from him on the video? He's 18 now, get him. The first time it was played, the officer testified they didn't hear it. So I backed it up, I slowed it down, I played it again, and he said, oh, he did say that. What was his purpose in doing that? Why was it okay to get Zach now that he was 18? You also heard him get out of the car when he got down to Zach's house. And at that point, Sarah's in the driveway, and Sarah has told everyone to leave the property multiple times. And William Durham Sr. storms out of his big black truck, and the kids tell him, He's got a gun. And Sarah says, no, he doesn't. And William Durham Sr. yells, get the gun. Get the fucking gun. And at that point, Sarah yells, babe. And she's calling for help. And so Zach starts to come out of the kitchen and into the garage, into his dwelling. Up until that point, Zach has no way of knowing who William Durham Sr. is yelling at to get a gun. We heard Dylan Aristi say, I was in the driveway. I didn't know who he was talking about. I was scared. Finally, as he storms up the driveway, moving quick, Billy gets in lockstep with him, and you see him gesture to Billy's arm. He says, you got me? And at that point, he is asking his son, who is much bigger than 18-year-old Zach, to physically attack Zach, who's standing right in the threshold of his garage. And Zach's warning them, get off the property. And Zach's showing them, I have a knife, I'll defend myself if I have to, but I don't want to. Get off the property. But that's not enough for them. They're above the law, they're there on a mission, and they're gonna get Zach. Then we hear from Catherine Durham. What does she say as she's storming down her driveway to Zach? As she's yelling at him, she's accosting him, she's confronting him. You little punk ass, what are you going to do about it? You're 18 now. Again, why are they, why are they now so gung-ho that Zach's 18? Why do they feel that that makes it OK to physically attack him, to block his road, to restrain him in his path? Why is that OK? Because he's 18 years old. He turned 18 like two weeks before this. They're grown adults. They're in their, like, what, 50s? And they're going to block a kid coming down the road, and then they're going to follow him to his home, and they're going to attack him because they think that they can do all that. And that's why we're here today, because they thought that they could get away with it, and the state was prepared to let them. Finally, you watch Catherine as she's standing up right against Zach's window. And she's filming, so she thinks this is the film that the police are going to see. And she's standing there, and all of a sudden she goes, did you just hit me? And she looks off to the side where her husband is, because she knows that if her husband thinks that Zach just hit her, that's enough. She's going to get what she wants. Her husband's going to come storming over. She's just incited her two children and her husband to commit violence against Zach and to not stop at any means necessary. Finally, we have the words of Zach. Call the cops. Get out of my face. Get off the property. He was not the aggressor here. The Durham's clearly were. Here's a picture of Catherine Durham approaching the car, yelling at Zach. 
This is where she claims the hit heard around the world occurred. Next, we have the first video from Sarah's phone. You've watched it several times. You can see for yourself exactly what happens. Why are you guys recording when you came out the bus first? When? 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 Yeah. I didn't put against the curve. You did it. You have it on video? Do you have it on video? Because I didn't do that. Yeah, we do have it on video. I like to see it. The top part is solid. Oh, that sucks. I know I didn't, you guys. Okay, right here. Come on, him or him? I mocked at him because he was in the way. I didn't hit him. Wait, on the side of the road? I didn't hit you, though, man. She she, she said you did. You're 18. Come on. You're 18. Come on. Oh, Get oh, out of his face. Get out of his face. No. Get out of his face. Oh, did you hit me? Did you hit me? Now. Yeah. Oh, did you hit me? Did you hit me? Now. You hit me. 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 A portion of that seemed to be cut off where the state's going to make a big deal. He says, say they assault, and that's all you're going to hear. Um, and he's fleeing back to his residence. And he's got his friends in the truck. And the Durhams still can't just stay away. They still can't just stay at the residence. They still can't just call the police if they feel like they've been wronged. And this whole incident is allegedly because Zach swerved at Gage in the road earlier in the day. Gage himself tells you, I didn't even tell my parents. I don't like drama. But he told Billy, and Billy passed on the word to Dad, I guess. Here's the problem with that. She also says, we got it on video. I've already viewed it. I've shown it to the cops. She didn't show it to the cops. And then later she claimed that, oh, it's some sort of other issue. But you heard a detective on the stand testify that there are other ways for them to get that footage, right? They don't even need it from Catherine. She's going to claim that, it, oh, I can't reach. They have other ways. He told you. He could have subpoenaed it. He's done it in the past. Told you he could have gotten a warrant for it. He's done it in the past. They didn't take those steps. And Catherine didn't push the issue because the still image they showed you, which doesn't have a date and doesn't have a time, fits their narrative. But what doesn't fit their narrative is the fact that the swerve never happened. And they didn't want the police to see the swerve never happened, and the police didn't bother to further investigate that. And you're going to hear from the judge that you can take that into consideration, and that you can consider the fact that that footage did not show what the Durham's claimed it showed, and that Zach did not actually swerve at Gage that day. Catherine's saying, oh, I never leaned in the truck trying to make it sound like, oh, I was back. You see where her hand is. You see she's leaning in the truck. She's clearly trying to agitate him. She's clearly there for the purposes of yelling at him. She's already told us, and we know from the ME, William Durham Sr.'s blood alcohol content that day was a point, point one when he got to the hospital. When asked about how much she had had to drink or what she had been drinking that day, she said, probably nothing. Probably or actually nothing. Did you just hit me? This is what provoked this entire incident. So let's talk a little bit about Gage Durham's testimony. He sat on the stand and he told you, you know, Billy's my best friend. We went to ride bikes. He did tell you that Zach swerved, but again, you can consider the fact that they never actually produced that video and law enforcement never attempted to get it as evidence that it didn't show what they're claiming. He also then said he went home and they were in the garage, or they were, I'm sorry, they were in the kitchen eating their dinner when mom alerts dad that Zach's driving down Bay Bear. And at that, dad goes out and he gets in his truck and he pulls out forward and blocks the road. And mom starts approaching and she's yelling. And Gage didn't hear everything that she's yelling, apparently. Um, but at one point, he does start to follow up behind mom and he's yelling and he's angry. 
and Zach's staying in his car, and Zach's telling Catherine to get out of his face, and then you saw the rest. Gage told you that they followed Zach down to the house. He told you that the purpose of following Zach down there was for a physical confrontation. He told you it was his understanding of his dad's words, you got me, to William Durham Jr. to mean, you got my back, you're going to go in, you're going to physically confront Zach. He told you they had no intention of stopping, that they were going to keep going. Next, we have Catherine Durham's testimony. You're going to hear some instructions about this because Catherine has made numerous false statements about what occurred that day, both on the stand and to law enforcement. And you can consider all of those false statements that she made as evidence that she lacks credibility. So let's talk about some of what she said. We already went over, did you hit me? She also claimed that she had the footage of this alleged swerve. She told police and then got on the stand and tried to tell you at first that when she showed up to Zach's house, she was physically assaulted by Sarah. And then you got to see the video. And in the video, she comes up and she grabs Sarah by the hair. She wants to tell you by the weave for some reason because that makes it any less bad to assault an 18-year-old girl as a full-grown adult. But she grabs Sarah by the hair and you saw the still image of that. And because we have these stills, you saw that it was Karen when, when uh, Catherine, I'm sorry, when Sarah first says, get off me, get off me, and she's falling down, and she, the camera's still going, and you see Catherine's face above her, and you see how angry that face looks. And she's physically assaulting Sarah, and she didn't want you to believe it. She wanted you to believe that she was the victim. Next, we have Billy Durham Jr.'s testimony. Now, before we get into this, I just want to reiterate something that Mr. Perry said in his opening argument. This case is an absolute travesty, tragedy. Someone, someone's dead, okay? No one is trying to say that that's a good thing. It's an absolute tragedy. But it is a tragedy that the Durhams invited upon themselves. And I feel bad for Billy. I do. His father is passed away. But that doesn't justify the actions of the Durham family. And you heard from Billy when he was on the stand that he was aware of a sequestration order and that he violated that sequestration order. And he watched testimony from his brother Gage regarding this incident. And he also watched commentary on his brother's testimony and he also talked to the prosecutors about his brother's demeanor and how he held up when questioned. You're allowed to use that to consider what effect that had on his testimony. Okay? And you can consider whether or not that shaped any of his testimony or any of his demeanor. Now let's talk about Billy's actions on that day and what he testified to. He testified that he was present at the house. He was in the driveway while his mom was confronting Zach. He testified that he rode up behind Gage on his bike. He testified that he waited for his dad to get there. And as dad got out of the truck, he and dad went up the driveway or the grass next to the driveway to physically confront Zach standing in the threshold of his driveway or, or threshold of his garage. And he told you that it was his intention to physically assault Zach. He told you that his dad's intention was for that to happen and that dad was following him in. He told you that dad and he rushed into the garage. He told you that at one point, Gage came in and joined this. And both Gage and Billy admitted that they punched Zach, that they stomped on Zach, that they kicked Zach. And Billy told you that he actually put Zach in the chokehold at one point. He admitted that to you. All of this despite the repeated warnings to get off the property and to leave. They could have easily walked away. Zach did not pursue them. They came to him. They came to his home, to his dwelling, and they physically attacked him. 
and there's no requirement in this law, in the law in this state, that we be stomped to death in our garage before we defend ourselves. Talk a little bit about Dylan Aristi's testimony. We've already touched on it a little bit. Says he was there with Zach that day. Says that he was in the truck when it was leaving to go ride this dirt bike and see if they could get it fixed. He says as they were leaving, no swerving. They're actually in the back trying to hold up this dirt bike. They wouldn't want the dirt bike to get messed up and they also wouldn't want themselves to be injured as they're sitting in the back of the truck. He confirms everything that happened thereafter. He tells you that he was scared when he heard William Durham Sr. say, get the gun. He says that he went in and was trying to break this up and the Durhams wouldn't stop. He says that when Sarah started being attacked by Catherine, that he intervened at that point and said, that's my sister, get off my sister, and that she continued to attack Sarah. He testified that no one hit Catherine Durham with a stick. Now let's talk a little bit about the law enforcement testimony that you've heard. You heard several officers, I'm not asking you to keep them all straight, but you've heard them confirm that they never obtained the ring footage. You heard them confirm that Zach was cooperative. You heard them confirm that he was airlifted to Atlanta Care Medical Center for treatment. You heard them tell you that he had a concussion and an injury to his ankle. You heard them tell you that the next morning, before even getting him appropriate clothing, they put him in a car and drove him back to the station for questioning. They left him in a room for a prolonged period of time. He was still cooperative with them. He told them that he had a concussion. He told them at times that things were foggy. He kept a very straightforward demeanor with them. He told them their sto his story. Then at one point they told him, we have Sarah's footage. And he, his response was, good. Do you want me to go through that footage with you? And I can explain to you what's happening in the footage. Because he was willing to explain it. And things were a little foggy. And he knew that the footage would show that he was not in the wrong. You've also heard that there was blood in the kitchen. And Peggy Prestis cleaned up this blood. She told police that, her husband told police that, Zach told police that. They all came to know and understand throughout their investigation that there had been blood in the kitchen and it had been cleaned up. You heard testimony that they didn't even take the investigative steps of trying to test with luminol throughout the kitchen to see if, where or if there was blood in that kitchen. They didn't bother. We already went over Zach's statement a little bit here. He told them that they came at him. He told them that he had a knife. He was honest about the situation. He walked them through the video. He showed them where each event was. He identified the people in the video for law enforcement. He didn't try to downplay his actions. He took accountability for what he did, but said, I was scared. This grown man was coming at me. He was bigger than me. I didn't want him to touch me. I didn't want him to hurt me. I didn't want him to hurt my wife, who was outside. I didn't want him to hurt my friends. I didn't want him to hurt my grandparents, including my sick grandmother, who had cancer. So I was defending myself, and I was defending my loved ones. <coughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you the second video. And again, you can see for yourself what is happening in this video and whose actions are leading to this. I promise you, you better back up because you're not going to like what's coming out. I promise you. No. No. Back out. Back up. Babe! Get off of my property. Get off of my property. Get off of my property.
trial intervention, a program whereby he might be able to get his charges dismissed. And you know with no explanation that Catherine Durham's charges were dismissed. And they were dismissed in July of 2021. And she testified that she met with her criminal defense attorney as recently as two weeks ago. And she testified that despite these charges being dismissed for, I'm not great at math, but my estimate is about a year and nine months that her criminal defense attorneys, who would have been made aware of a dismissal, automated, made aware, that they never informed her that the charges were dismissed and that she found out for the first time on that stand. Think about the reason why those charges were dismissed. Think about what the motivation may have been behind dismissing those charges. And I ask you to consider that when you're considering the credibility of the witnesses as well as the credibility of the prosecution in this case. What motivated it? Was it that William Durham Sr. was in law enforcement? So we went through some of Catherine's lies. We got it on camera. The cops already said it. The video did not, but the video didn't exist. Did you just hit me? When I showed up, they attacked me. This is Gage showing up that day. He's the first to arrive down the street. Sarah tells him to back away. She tells him you're not gonna like what's coming out. This is Billy arriving, and as you see, he's glancing back over his shoulder down the street to where Dad is, making sure Dad's coming for backup. Here's the two of them again talking to Sarah as she's telling him to leave the property. Here's Billy again looking back as Dad arrives, make sure Dad's there and dad's gonna have his back. This is William Durham Sr. exiting his truck before it's even fully stopped. This is Billy marching up towards Zach's home. He's marching towards that garage and he's on a mission. This is the footage of when William Durham Sr. says, you got me, and you can see him cupping Billy's arm there. So let's talk a little bit about the law in this case because the law is gonna be important. There's something in the state of New Jersey called the Castle Doctrine. And that's the right of, to self-defense, the right to protect one's bodily integrity, integrity, particularly to protect one's bodily integrity in the home. It's the essence of what it is to be an American. It's the essence of what it is to be a New Jersey resident. It comes directly from Article 1, Paragraph 1 of the New Jersey Constitution. It is the first thing in our Constitution that you have that right to protect yourself, particularly in your home. If someone, or if three, and eventually a fourth person, is angry enough to intrude into your residence and physically assault you despite repeated warnings, that person's angry enough to not stop and you don't have to give up your life for their anger. So here's some things that the state wants you to believe. They want you to believe that Zach should have gone into the house and stayed there, locked the door, and called 911. That's not the law. That is not what is required of him by law. It is meant to confuse 
And that is all it is meant for. Zach is allowed to remain in his garage. He does not have to flee to some furthest part of the residence. He's in his dwelling. And they're coming in to attack him. They want to believe you to believe that Zach provoked or escalated the situation. He blocked them. Or, I mean, they blocked him. He tried to flee. They followed him home. They came at him. They pursued him. Sarah told him to leave approximately seven times. Zach told them to leave. They came anyway, and they came with a purpose, and they weren't going to stop. They also want you to believe that Zach couldn't have gotten a knife, shouldn't have gotten a knife for his protection. He was perfectly allowed to do that by law. 2C39 6E. You can keep a knife or a firearm in your home without any sort of permit. You have every right to use that to defend yourself. There's no duty to retreat in the dwelling. And the judge is going to give you extensive instructions on this. And he's going to tell you the dwelling includes the garage. And it also includes the threshold to the garage. And it's not some arbitrary line drawn in the sand. And the duty to retreat is only if you can do so with complete safety. So think about that when you're thinking about the fact that the Durhams are storming into his garage and that they admitted they were there for the purposes of physically assaulting him. And they admitted that they weren't gonna stop and Gage specifically told you that they were gonna go into that garage, that they were gonna keep going into the garage. There was no, they were coming there to assault Zach in his dwelling. Furthermore, Zach moving further back into his garage clearly wasn't going to stop the attack. You see him. He's all the way almost at the kitchen door at one point. And they're still stomping on him. They're still kicking him. They're still putting him in a chokehold. They're doing all these things. Gage told you he was trying to flee into the kitchen and yelling for help. Gage himself told you that. Further retreat was not going to prevent this attack. Provocation, to the, state, this, to the extent the state wants to say that this was provocation, that's on a specific occasion. That's not getting your feelings hurt five hours before. It's not getting your feelings hurt and then, and then waiting and having a time to cool off and still coming down and attacking someone. The only people who provoked this were the Durham's. So here are some pictures. And as you can see in these pictures, and the state wants to make a big deal again about where, whether Zach's feet are on the black or the white, but again, that's not the law. You can consider the threshold. If somebody's trying to intrude, he doesn't need to wait until they are all the way into the garage before he tries to prevent the intrusion. He's allowed to try to stand in his threshold and prevent them from coming in. And that's what the law says. And it'll tell you things like a porch is considered part of the dwelling, okay? And it's, it's not just, oh, this arbitrary line that you can't cross. And if you look at these images, by the time anything is done, Zach has one foot into that white. And by the time William Durham Sr. enters, you see that Zach is all the way in his garage. And William Durham Sr., based on the testimony of everyone in the video you watched, is pushing him further into the garage. They're in the garage. This is in the dwelling. <coughs> All of these pictures show you Zach retreating and Zach being in the dwelling because that's what happened here. The necessity of retreating if it can be done safely before using deadly force only applies outside the dwelling. Zach is never required to retreat from attack in his dwelling. In his dwelling, the force that Zach uses to respond need not be proportionate. He may respond to any attack with deadly force. Again, inside the dwelling includes the threshold to the dwelling. Furthermore, these are the things that the medical examiner told you can cause death. And it's stomping, punching, kicking, chokeholds. They can all cause death. Deadly force was being used against Zach in his garage. Here's Gage Durham stomping on Zach. Here's William Durham Jr. preparing to punch Zach. Here's William Durham Sr. tackling Zach as Zach attempts to get away. Here's William Durham Sr. with Zach in a chokehold.
here's Catherine showing up and attacking Sarah. Someone who Zach also has a right to protect. Here's Catherine Durham Sr. pulling at Sarah's hair. A picture is worth a thousand words. And in this case, you've seen all the pictures. And you're going to get a full picture of exactly what happened. You did already. This is the provocation. Catherine is the provocation. This is the attack. That is William Durham Sr. still not giving up, still giving Jack, getting Zach in a chokehold. There he is, tackling Zach, who's trying to get away. And there is Catherine, again, attacking Sarah. Members of the jury, you have listened to and seen all the evidence in the case. You know exactly what happened on that day. You know that Zachary was acting in self-defense. And I'm confident that at the end of this case, you're going to return a verdict of not guilty. Thank you.